Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nicely Chunk of Benny and Greg King. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. Today, we're going to be dissecting our opinion about the controversy that's going on within the Minnesota organization. But before we hop into all that, got to give a quick shout out to a subscriber today, as always. And today, it's going to be Melinda Thomas. Thank you so much for like, comment, subscribing, turn on post notification, and showing so much love and support towards our YouTube channel and our podcast overall. We greatly appreciate it. Now, Greg, I know you heard the news about the firing of Gerson Roses. Obviously, you know, he was fired due to a multiple of, you know, bad decisions with in the front office and then also you know having inappropriate sexual relations with a co-worker but i mean greg what are your overall thoughts on this firing how is this going to impact carl anthony towns and the minnesota timberwolves heading into this season and you know just their overall future yeah it's going to impact them a lot and just the way the things spiraled out of control all the information that came out so fast and so rapid about this about this you know about rosas and it's it's kind of a bad look on the organization you know again it's the identity the identity of them and the and stability of them is just showing that this this place this organization is toxic and, and they need to fix the culture here because it's not it's not it's not good it's not showing cat that he wants not showing cat that this this can be a franchise for the future that that can be that can contend and help him win so but regarding road size i mean he created a toxic environment i mean like you said inappropriate inappropriate alter uh affair and sexual race relations with you know a co-worker that's unacceptable that's unprofessional you don't want that happening in-house internally you never want you never want that to happen it's a bad look on your franchise and for a, for a person representing your organization you never want that to happen um um he he made his own decision he was very bossy you know didn't he got along with the players especially carl anthony towns which is good but you also need to get you also need to get along with your you know with your co-workers with your front office front office personnel you know the owner the scouting department Department. All those people are important, you know, making big decisions on who guys to bring in to make this culture right, make it make it a great place, you know, to come in and work every day. Um, so the fact that he was making his own decision and not letting anybody, you know, put their input and not really listening to them and being open um, in those conversations and meetings is very alarming to me. And then on yeah. top of that, yeah, and, on, and then on top of that, blaming others when things went wrong. That's another that's a bad quality as a general manager, for sure. Yeah, and you know we saw a little bit of these uh, these type of similar situations with the Dallas Mavericks earlier this offseason. You know, yeah. Vol Garris ended up stepping down just because you know he didn't really get along with the Shadow GM. You know, the Shadow GM probably won't be there long term if he's still there at this moment. But you know, obviously, you know Minnesota Timberwolves they haven't been much of a very successful franchise for the last twenty years. I mean, they've only made the postseason one time in the last seventeen seasons, and that was when they had All Star Jimmy Butler on the roster. But you know, obviously. Um, Grisson Rosas, he's definitely wrong in this situation, but I think it's actually interesting that, you know, before this entire scenario came into play, he was actually already going to be fired. It was just a matter of time because, you know, obviously Alex Rodriguez and Mark Lore, they're going to be the new ownership owners of the Minnesota Timberwolves heading into next season. And, you know, with all that being said, they've been doing some evaluation and then obviously, you know, the evaluation that they've been doing on uh, Roses these past few weeks, especially during the off season, they didn't really like, you know, the way that he operated, um, as far as maybe decision making within the offseason and then you know just the overall um lack of compatibility within the front office with the co-workers and everything you talked about how you know he doesn't really take too many other people's opinions and he's the one that does most of the decision making um yeah. within the front office and you know that obviously caused a lot of tension within the front office and you know it's going to trickle down to the rest of the organization which you definitely don't want having especially when you have you know an all-star player in carl anthony towns that you know definitely has been trying to win since he's been in the the nba i mean he's going to be heading into his sixth or seventh NBA season only sniffed the postseason one time that's definitely a big problem but you know obviously you know the the tension with Ro Gerson Roses and you know Sachin Gupta played a big part in you know his firing I mean Gupta is somebody that you know is an executive vice president of basketball operations so he's definitely yeah. somebody that also has a big say in the decision making and then, you know just given the fact that he hasn't really been able to have much of an input it's a definitely a humongous problem but I think one of the biggest um reasons as to why you know Gerson Roses was fired is because you know he made a ton of bad decisions starting off with the firing of uh former head coach Ryan Saunders. Now, Ryan Saunders, the reason why he was promoted to the head coaching job is given the fact that, you know, his father 
who, you know, uh, was a former head coach with the Minnesota Timberwolves, ended up passing. And then Tom Thibodeau ended up taking over. And then he ended up leaving. So Ryan Saunders, he was next in line for the job. But obviously, he was fired only after 137 games. And that had a lot of people, you know, scratching their head simply because, you know, there's kind of a sentimental value there, given the fact that, you know, he's the son of the former head coach that just passed a few years ago. And then on top of that, he didn't really give any other uh, minority candidates an opportunity to compete for the job or even apply for the head coaching job in Minnesota. So he had not only NBA players upset about that, but also NBA Coaches Association uh, members upset about that situation as well. And then not to mention, this is a guy that, you know, has made some weird decisions when it comes to, you know, trades in the NBA. I mean, he traded away Cam Johnson and Dario Sarge for Jared Culver. And, you know, that obviously ended up being very bad because Jared Culver just hasn't panned out in Minnesota. And then obviously you see the success that Cam Johnson and Dario Sarge have had in Phoenix. And then not to mention, you know, he ends up ultimately flipping Culver for Patrick Beverly, who's much, much, much more less valuable in comparison to guys like Cam Johnson and Dario Sarge. And then on top of that, one of the biggest trades that, you know, he made that also isn't really looking like it's going to pan out is the fact that, you know, he traded away Andrew Wiggins in a first and second round pick, which ultimately ended up turning to Jonathan Kaminga and Miles McBride. So, I mean, there's just a number of negative things that, you know, have came with Gerson Roses. But, I mean, the sexual relationships with the co-workers definitely yeah. draw the line. Yeah, that's a huge one. And that, and that leads me to my next point is stability in your front office is important. And, and an example I put is the Knicks. You know, the Knicks brought in Tom Thibodeau, you know, a great defensive minded coach. And they brought in some veterans around that young group. And now they have stability in the organization, brought in some new front office guys. And they, you know, got made it to the playoffs in the four seed. And, you know, they got the ball running, ro rolling. I mean, now they're, you know, they're optimistic about this season and everything is going right for the Knicks now. They have a bright future. I love their young talent, but you can also go wrong like what happened to the Pacers you know they hired the, the assistant coach from the Toronto Raptors he didn't really pan out arguing with players and then on top of that arguing with you know the uh with the front office so that's why I'm saying that stability in your front office is so huge we you know we worry about the players having on-court chemistry on court i mean off court chemistry such as in your front office is also important so they need to really have a meeting alex rodriguez and you know Gu gupta as well now that he's the interim you know of for hit for uh rosas they really need to sit down and talk to their co-workers and figure out what is our identity what do we want to show carl anthony towns going forward you know like i said he you know, carl anthony anthony towns only has one year left on his deal so what are we going to show him that hey we can be contenders going forward they and i you know i like to move somewhat of what roses do you know he got his best friend in d he he drafted anthony edwards he traded for malik beasley I like Nas Reed. I like. I think Patrick Beverly. I think his, you know, his mentality and you know the toughness that he brings on the court. I feel like that. I feel like they're trying to change the culture with with that move. I like Jared Vanderbilt. Um, so I like you know the young, and and I like you know getting Jaden McDaniels as well. So I like the young talent they have brought in. Is it enough you know to you know be a high contender in the West? No, but I think it's enough you know to really build something in the future to show Cat that we're gonna be serious going forward. But they have to get they have to find their ideal identity and they need stability fast because you know the season's coming up pretty fast and trying to go through the process to find a new GM it's gonna take a long time to find somebody that you truly trust to rebuild this whole organization because they need it badly yeah and i think most importantly outside of finding a new gm they need to get on page with everybody within the front office i mean obviously yeah. you know the, like we talked about gerson roses didn't wasn't somebody that really communicated all that well with the rest of his co-workers and everything but i think it's important for the people in the front office to really do a good job or at least a better job of communicating with you know their players within the association specifically carl anthony towns i mean the fact that he wasn't notified about the firing is absurd i mean this is Ridiculous. a guy that was in yeah. favor of gerson roses he had a great relationship with him we talked about how gerson roses didn't really have any negative relationships with anybody on the team or it hasn't been reported at least and then on top of that you know the front office they they have to do a better job of cooperating with Carl Anthony Towns when it comes to, you know, the decision making um, and bringing in, you know, key assets and everything. Yes, they 
you know, gave allowed him to give his input about D'Angelo Russell and everybody. But I mean, outside of that, it doesn't really seem like Carl Anthony Towns has a similar amount of power to, you know, the rest of the superstars in the NBA. You know, guys like Joel Embiid, um, a LeBron James, a Steph Curry. He's a franchise player. He needs to have a similar input to those guys if you want to keep him around. Because like you talked about, his, he's near the end of his contract. And if, you know, things continue to go left and they continue to be in rebuild mode for, you know, years and years to come, not only is Carl Anthony Towns more than likely going to request a trade or not resign with you you're going to have guys like d'angelo russell not want to resign with the minnesota yeah. Wolves, and then maybe that causes a negative domino effect with guys like anthony edwards in the near future as well so the minnesota Timberwolves, they definitely have to get on their um grind and you know make sure that they're making the right decisions in the front office that way it can trickle down to the rest of the organization but you guys let us know what y'all think about this entire subject in the comment section thank you so much for tuning in to another episode with me and greg on the ball fake podcast if you're new to our youtube channel or you're listening on apple Podcasts or spotify make sure to give us a five star rating and a nice review but besides that it's your boy nicey chunga benny i'm here with my co-host greg king and we out we out <laughs>